insane gun upgrades. Throughout the history of warfare, it's been normal practice for the designers of weapons to find themselves tested and refined under the stress of combat. In many cases, soldiers often need more protection or firepower than their weapons originally provided. In other circumstances, real-life combat reveals flaws in their design, which were not originally picked up in factories or even with the field testing. Whatever the reason, upgrades are required for the weapon to maintain its optimal performance. Some are merely improvisations made in the field. Others are more elaborate ideas drawn up in the engineering workshops. These are some of the most unusual upgrades added to some standard weapon designs. Number 1. The Pritchard Greener Revolver Bayonet At first glance, this upgrade might appear awkward and unwieldy. When bayonets first appeared, they were intended to be accessories for muskets and then rifles, but unlike a rifle attachment, pistol bayonets were not so common on the battlefield. They weren't a new concept and had been a popular attachment, particularly used by British seamen in the late 18th century on their firearms, which were referred to as boarding pistols and were used while attacking and boarding an enemy ship. The bayonet was used as an alternative weapon once the pistol was discharged, as a ship's officer or sailor firing the pistol had no time to reload it in the heat of battle. He would use his bayonet to attack in close-quarter hand-to-hand combat. With this idea in mind, Arthur Pritchard began designing a bayonet for the Webley Mark VI service revolver. Pritchard was a retired British officer who re-enlisted in the Army when World War I started. After a year in France, he returned to England to serve as a training officer. During his service on the Western Front, he had become familiar with the trench raid tactics used by both sides. When clearing an enemy trench, soldiers were required to fix bayonets to their rifle and prepare to fight the enemy head-on, face-to-face. Officers, however, were only armed with a revolver in these attacks, which had no means of attaching a bayonet. The Webley revolver was designed to reload quickly, but Pritchard maintained that a bayonet was a far more suitable solution for reacting quickly to a situation. He presented his concept to the Wilkinson Sword Company, who produced sabers and bayonets for the British Army, but the manufacturer was already inundated with war production and had to turn down Pritchard's proposal. Wilkinson's rivals, W.W. Greener, however, saw potential and believed it could be a great commercial success. The company also had access to a surplus supply of old French Model 1874 Gras rifle bayonets, which would be converted into pistol bayonets relatively easily and cost-effectively. The top 10.5 inches of the Gras bayonet was cut off and was then fixed to a gunmetal hilt shaped to fit the Webley's frame. The bayonet's clever design meant it connected perfectly to the revolver. However, its one-pound weight would have meant that the balance of the revolver was compromised. Ultimately, W.W. Greener only produced 200 copies, and Pritchard's bayonet never officially entered service, even though officers were allowed to purchase it privately for their own personal use. Despite its negligible use in combat, the design was nonetheless both radical and impressive. History recruits, it's time for you to take to the skies to defeat our enemies. But why are we going to war, sir? because the enemy doesn't believe in history, Recruit. We can't stand for that. Re-education through War Thunder. Now is your chance to face off against friends and enemies alike in the ultimate, immersive, free-to-play and cross-platform vehicular war game, War Thunder. Using a collection of vehicles spanning over a hundred years of development, starting from the 1920s. With intense PvP battles at various immersion levels for all playstyles, you'll find an action-packed and tactical experience. Choose your battle and emerge victorious. Available on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PC, and last-gen consoles, you can fight across the world in PvP combined arms battles, choosing from over 2,000 historically accurate vehicles. I recommend trying the early Merlin Spitfire for the ultimate World War II flying experience. Sign up for your free account today. Number 2. The M1911 Pistol with an Extended Magazine and Brass Catching Cage Even though most weapon upgrades were designed to improve its performance, this was not always the case. Some upgrades were installed to weapons as safety measures. The World War I-era airborne M1911 pistol had both its performance and safety upgrades addressed. When aircraft entered into military service, they were primarily used in reconnaissance roles. In the early days, when pilots encountered an enemy aircraft, they would salute one another in a gentlemanly manner. 
However, this soon changed when pilots began to engage in deadly aerial combat. Initially, airplanes were not fitted with machine guns, and so pilots had to use their standard-issue pistols. For some British Royal Flying Corps pilots, the M1911 was the weapon of choice. As there is very little time to reload a sidearm during aerial combat, an extended magazine was designed. Similar contraptions were used in land warfare, and there were examples of these magazines adapted for the pistol that carried more than 20 rounds. Unfortunately, the exact capacity of the airborne M1911 extended magazine remains unknown. The major risk with using any pistol in the relatively fragile aircraft of the time was that the ejected cases from the firearm would fly off at great speed and could lead to damage to the fuselage or mechanical parts. Especially vulnerable were planes with rear-mounted engines, because the ejected cartridges could easily end up in a critical part of its mechanism. In response to these hazards, a brass catching cage was mounted on the M1911 pistol alongside the extended magazine. The cage was mounted on the right side of the pistol receiver and allowed for the containment of over 20 empty cases. The cage was also carefully designed so as not to interfere with how the pilot held the weapon. Upon firing, the receiver would retract and the empty case would drop directly into the cage. Even though extended magazines were commonly used with World War I pistols, there are few records of cartridge-catching cages being made in any significant quantity. Number 3. The Mule Adaptive Storage Stock Extended and adaptive stocks were commonplace amongst many weapon upgrades. In many cases, weapons had inbuilt storage areas within their stock. These were usually for weapon cleaning kits or oil containers that a soldier may require in the field for a quick maintenance of his gun. In 2015, however, the American company Mule Tactical raised the adaptive stock design to a new level. They designed a buttstock which had an internal compartment for a backup pistol. The Modular Utility Linked Equipment, or Mule for short, adaptive storage stock was initially built for the AR-15 and M4 family of assault rifles but also created versions for shotguns as well. Made of a high-impact polymer, the stock is slightly curved at the butt and is capped with a firm rubber pad. With the press of a button, the lower part pivots on a hinge and reveals a holster for a pistol. The holster is interchangeable so that various different types of pistols can be stored, including compact pistols. While the design is well-engineered and unique, its usefulness has been questioned. The purpose is, of course, to provide a secondary firearm for the shooter. But in reality, swapping to a dedicated weapon from a normal holster is much quicker in a tactical situation. Number 4. The Peterson Device Periscope fittings for the M1903 Springfield rifle were not the only thing the Americans experimented with during World War I. A more important issue with the rifle was its slow reloading cycle, which was as a result of its very powerful .30-06 round. The American engineer John D. Peterson sought to address this by offering an unusual solution. He designed a special bolt that fitted the standard M1903 receiver and allowed the rifle to be fired as a semi-automatic. Peterson's automatic bolt also had a special magazine, which could hold 40 rounds of the 30 caliber pistol cartridges. These were the same caliber as the standard Springfield rounds, but because they were shorter, they had significantly less power, a compromise that allowed the rifle to fire as a semi-automatic. This reduced the rifle's effective range from 500 down to 300 yards. The Peterson device had a built-in grooved barrel that fitted the longer chamber of the M1903 rifle. The magazine was also unusually mounted at a 45-degree angle to allow unhindered use of the rifle sights. The device was cleverly designed so that it could also be used alongside the classic rifle bolt. This meant, however, that modifications had to be made, which included a small ejection port for spent cartridges and the adjacent stock cut. When the user wished to alternate to semi-automatic fire, he would have to empty his magazine, take out the standard bolt, and replace it with the Peterson device. This clever piece of technology was viewed by the American military as a groundbreaking wonder weapon. They were sure its high rate of fire was sure to suppress even the heaviest fortified German line. They imagined a line of soldiers advancing across no man's land firing this device at the enemy trenches. As they ran, it would be extremely difficult for anyone in the trenches to show his head or any part of his body. In reality, production of the rifle simply started too late in the war, beginning in late 1918. 
When the government canceled the contract, 65,000 devices with 1.6 million magazines, 65 million cartridges, and over 101,000 modified Springfield rifles had been manufactured. They were quickly declared surplus, however, and were soon obsolete once the M1 Garand semi-automatic rifle was introduced into service. Although these upgrades and modifications all operated in unique ways, whether it be in purpose, appearance, or an operating principle, they all had one common purpose. That was to improve a weapon system and to enhance the shooter's chances of survival. To play War Thunder on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox now, sign up using the link in the description below and receive a massive free bonus pack including a ton of premium vehicles, boosters, and access to a premium account model, and more.